I am a perfume snob. I'm trying not to be, but like, it's so good. When you, once you get to a level where you know what a good perfume smells like, you've had access to that. Bitch. It's, it's hard to be like, I just want to go back to regular body spray. No. <laughs> Hey guys, Hedgehog, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. So today I have a quick video. I'm really just trying to get as much content out to you guys. I don't know if you know this, but a girl is somewhat close to reaching her watch time hours goals on YouTube. But the problem is, is that it is a floating window of 12 months. So as days go on, videos from 12 months ago start to drop off and the views that I have accumulated from 12 months ago start to drop off. So ideally, I should have done the work that I'm doing now months ago, but we're here now. Let's try not to lose any more hours. So right now you'll see a huge content push from me of just stuff that it's like things that I was like, oh, I can stretch this content out and have it as a backup. But now I'm like, no, no more backups. Post the content, post it sis. So I'm just pushing out content. So today's video is going to be very short kind of informative. If you clicked on it or you read the title, you know it's about reviewing my fragrance collection from worst to best. So if that sounds like something you're interested in watching, then just scroll down, hit the subscribe button, join the night G, gang, 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 and let's get into this video. Um, I wanna start by saying none of the fragrances I think are bad. Typically, I don't keep things that are bad or things that I don't like. I'm, I'm, I'm not a hoarder. I throw stuff away. So these are all pretty good staple perfumes. I just, over time, accumulate them in different ways. Some are gifts, some are things that I've asked for, some are things that I've gone out and gotten. So the collection on a whole ends up being very different because to me, I think I make really good perfume recommendations, but not necessarily like something that my mom would get me is like, the best fragrance recommendation for me, but will I take it because it's a perfume and it doesn't smell terrible? Absolutely. I love perfumes, I love fragrance. I always have because my mom used to kill them. She used to buy them from Avon, <laughs> like steady, like on the dot. When one was about to run out, she'd buy two more. It's something for me that I really enjoy, I've always enjoyed. Don't ask me about notes, whatever. I can just give you the vibe of what a perfume is or why you'd want to wear it. So let's get into my collection. Okay. So overall, smell-wise for perfumes, I am not someone who discriminates. I like anything from something that's fruity, something that's floral, something that's musky, something that is sweet, something, I like it all. I do not discriminate. I want to pull up every fragrance based on their description because I don't want to say the wrong thing. I'm not gonna be embarrassed out here. My worst perfume in my collection is actually one of the first perfumes I ever bought for myself and like high-end, I guess, perfumes. And that's Miss Versace Bright Crystal. As you can see, she's almost done. She got used. You know what, this perfume, anytime I wore it, I would get complimented on what I smelled like. So I wanna say that this perfume is something that most people will enjoy. It's a people pleaser. I have sold people on this perfume just by wearing it. However, for me, I haven't worn it in a long time, so I'm gonna spray it. It's very, very fresh. It's described as sweet, musky, and fruity, and it has notes of pomegranate, uzu, frost, peony, magnolia, lotus, amber, musk, mahogany. Those floral, peony, magnolia scents are what turned me off, I think, from this perfume. Does it dry on the skin really, really well and on, like, fabric really really well absolutely you will smell like this all day and you smell great all day for, but for me I just don't think it's like when you look at me I don't think that this is what you're expecting me to smell like <laughs> nor do I think that this is a signature smell for me I don't know how to describe it but to me this is my worst perfume in my collection is it still a good perfume like I said absolutely I just there's something about it that I'm like I have to be in a mood to wear it usually for me this is like a summertime perfume because I don't know, there's something that about those florals that just really, like I imagine like if I'm walking down the street and someone smells me in this, they're gonna be like, oh my God, invigoration. Like there's something that's very spring to summertime fine about this. It's just not my favorite. Out of everything I have, it is not my favorite. I would say it's my least favorite for sure. Easily, easily, hands down. 
Next we have Sexual Fleur by Michelle Germain. This is a relatively new perfume to my collection. My mom got me this. Well, she didn't get it for me. She had it and she gave it to me. <laughs> Let's be clear. I actually am surprised by it because to me, anything that's like sexual, I just kind of associate with drugstore. It's not giving like, I want my perfumes to be like high end. Sorry if that sounds elitist, but it's the truth. <laughs> I'm trying to elevate my perfume collection, not go backwards. Like I'm no longer in middle school. But as it was a gift and I smelled it, I was like, this is actually not bad. Very, very fruity. So you have, it says it's a floriental. Your notes are juicy pink grapefruit, macadamia nut, pink daisy, purple plumeria, pink freesia, Egyptian jasmine, delectable plum, central musk, sexy wood, and dulce de leche. It's a really solid perfume. And I would say it's only low ranked because of the fact that I just got it. I don't wear it that much. It's an eau de parfum. It doesn't linger long enough for me. I wish it lingered longer. And as strong as it comes out of the bottle, it wears away, I think, a little too quickly. And that's a part of the problem is that I think it actually does have a really great scent. I just wish that would stay on me longer. I wish this was a straight perfume just to get that extra wear time just to get this scent a little bit longer because it's really really floral and fruity and that juicy pink grapefruit comes right through like as soon as you spray it out so i would say it's low it's low on the ranking simply because i don't wear it often enough but i see myself wearing this more now that summer's here because this is very much so something i'm going to spray down on my body going to caravana going to concerts because this is the scent you want people to be like mm, what is that like that's how it smells it's one of those like all of those notes, you're like, how does it work? But it does. <laughs> and it's very, like, you would definitely feel very plump and juicy. This is actually very fun and flirty. So I like it. It's just, I'm like, is it a favorite? Not yet. Next, we have Ellie Saab's Rose Couture Perfume. Actually, again, I think this is an eau de toilette. The reason why this one is so far down, look at this big bottle that is empty. The reason why it's so far down on the list is because the bottle I had is faulty. I got this as a gift. I asked for it as a gift because I saw it one day in person, sprayed it on me, loved how I smelled hours later, and I was like, I want that perfume. There's something wrong with this bottle, however, and I probably used maybe 10 to 25% of this. The rest of it leaked out. But I had noticed, I thought, oh, maybe perfume is evaporating, maybe it's the bottle, maybe it's the light, maybe it's the pink. Who knows? I'm not a scientist. Honestly, at first, the spray out of the bottle, off-putting. A little granny. It's that type of floral rose scent. It's described as, with a new floral poetry opens up with a peony rose accord at the heart, luminous orange blossom mingles with transparent jasmine and delicious rose nectar. This new floral echo to the Elisab the perfume signature is blah, 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 blah. Yeah, so, mature. However, I do like the way this type of floral ages over time. Whereas this one is more fun. I agree that this one is a bit more stuffy than that. But there's something to me that just smells so clean and so fresh. I loved it. Like honestly, I loved it and I loved how it smelled on me. Literally hours later, like I sprayed it in a store. I went home and I was like, no, I smell like I smell good. I don't like it. There's something that is grandma about it. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not I, I know what my bias is. Again, I told you I got into Bergman's because of my mother. <laughs> so we're growing out of that. And that's also kind of why it's low down there is because I recognize that there's something a little aged about the smell. But I love it. It's just so like almost nostalgic, almost a little baby powder, but not quite there. More on the floral side. Very, very sweet. Very, very fragrant. I don't know. Something about it does it for me. So I love it. But I wish I got to use it more. <laughs> because if I got to use it more, then I could tell you how much I love the perfume. But I love the base smell. I love what I have had of it, which is why it's above the other two. But definitely, I won't lie. I won't lie that there is something that I will recognize that is a bit old lady about it. But I just, it's so beautiful. It's so pretty. Like, I just I smell it. I'm like, mmm. <laughs> I don't want to rub it all over me. I don't know. I just like it. Next, we have one of my first perfumes to ever get as an adult, which is Hot Couture by Givenchy. As you can see, this little big bottle and it's almost done. I've gone through, I think, two or three of these. Let me smell this. I haven't smelled this in so long. I preserve Hot Couture by Givenchy. I don't know how to describe the smell. 
first of all, I love the color. I love anything that's this color, this like rich golden color. They do also have like a rose version, but I don't know, Tyler is the one that put me on, so this is one of the first things he ever bought for me, was this perfume. And obviously I've clearly kept going through it, he's replenished. And he was just like one day, what kind of perfumes do you like? I know you like perfume, but like, what do you like? And I was like, I just kind of like was like, I think I like something like this, but kind of like this. I don't remember what I said to him. And then he bought me this and I had never smelled it before and I fell in love with it. But basically, a raspberry note threads its way through the veil of amber vet vetiver? vetiver and voluptuous magnolia with a discreet touch of pepper. Like a rare couture gown, this fragrance is an original artful creation. I, it's just... There is something very warm and rich about it. It's not your average perfume. And it's not like, it really is. I agree that they haven't, they haven't classified it. Like I'm just Googling obviously guys, but I don't see it classified as a floral. I don't see it classified as a fruity. It's definitely, if I was to put it on anything, it's sweet musk. Like it's in between there somewhere. It is so good. Like, it's one of the ones that I don't wear every day specifically so that I can save it and wear it again at another time. Is it my favorite? Now that my collection's grown a bit in the past little bit, it should be higher. The next six could all tie for number one, but I'm trying to be strategic here and just put them in order. They're really all really great in their own way. I'm classifying only because I have to in the context of the video, but I love this perfume. I love it so much. Oh my God. Next we have the Ellie Saab Original Perfume. So this will put me onto Ellie Saab in the first place because I just picked this up one day. Oh my god. Again, I'm not gonna lie, something about the Ellie Saab perfumes are on that edge of old lady, but I love them so much. I can't, I can't explain. I can't explain what it is. Maybe to me it's because like I associate like it with like rich old lady. It's not like just old musty dusty lady. It's like really rich auntie vibes, like that's what Ellie Saab gives me. Radiant Orange Blossom and Jasmine Bouquet combined with an addictive honey rose and patchouli heart. Just like a haute couture dress, this perfume creates a glowing femininity. Concur. Concur. You really get the orange blossom and that honey rose type, yeah, like just imagine that. Like orange blossom, honey rose. I feel like th those three types of words, phrases, whatever you want to call them, best classify this. I almost lost the lid, oh my god. But I love this perfume, love it, like killed, like there wasn't a place I was going where I wasn't smelling like this. It was so good. But it's so, I know people are gonna say when they go to the store and start smelling these, they're gonna be like, Natalie, you like old lady smells? And I'm like, yeah, I do. That's why I'm trying to be transparent and let you know I am aware, okay? But it smells so good. It smells to me like rich. It smells more like money than old lady. I just think a lot of people like a lot of fruity and flighty things, whereas me, I like the stuff that's here to stay, baby. The stuff that smells so good on your skin hours later. Like that, mm, delicious, chef's kiss. Next we have Versace Dylan Blue, but the woman version. So funny story about how I acquired this was because I started buying Tyler Versace Dylan Blue cologne, and then they dropped the woman's perfume, and I was obsessed with it. So to me, there's something about this that almost comes off as berry-like. When I put it on, I, I feel juicy. Like, I feel like a plump little berry. Imagine a blueberry pancake, but in a perfume smell. Like, to me, that is what it gives. I don't know how to describe it, but it is a fruity floral. Keynotes, black currant, wild blooms, musk. So the musk definitely probably ties in to make it similar to the cologne. An alchemy of irresistible notes that dance, arouse, come together and embrace. This fragrance is a refreshing black currant sorbet with Granny Smith apple and a contemporary floral bouquet. Woody base notes playfully mixed together to create a unique, captivating, sensuous, and vibrant movement. And I feel like that's whoever on their marketing team wrote that. Exactly that, especially the fact that it's sensual but vibrant at the same time. Like there's something there that like, you smell so good. You know what this perfume is great for? Day to night. If you're doing anything where, say you're going to a day party then you're going to dinner after, this is the type of perfume you wanna wear. Just because of the, the fact that you're out all day, so something like this ages really well on the skin. It's very, very sensual and it's very surprising because it doesn't smell like the cologne, but I agree that this is exactly, if I was to make a woman's version of that cologne, which smells delicious by the way, 
this would be it. This is exactly how I'd want it to smell. But it's not the same, but it's, I feel like, a great pairing. They pair really well together. Love this. I love this for day to day, but sometimes it feels too sexual to wear to work. Like, I'm just like, no, no, no. Let me say that for another time. Next we have Rihanna's Rebel Fleur. So sue me if you want to, but this drugstore perfume can get it. Like, can get it any day of the week. First of all, obsessed with the bottle. Can we talk about how this bottle was like ahead of its time? Like, just so, so clever, Rihanna. We should have known she was a force from then. I picked this up one day at the drugstore because they were having a sale. I also walked in there and I was like, you know me, I love anything Rihanna. Let me just pick this up. And again, builds my perfume collection. You guys, I'm pretty sure I've bought this in the last three years. Okay, maybe four to five years. Some of these I've had longer than that. Look at where this is, because I kill it. It's so sweet, sugary, but I'm obsessed with it. It'll give you a cavity sweet. Obsessed with it, it's high up there because every time I put it on, I'm like, yes. Look at me, I'm like, oh, yes. Top notes are peach, plum, and red berries. Middle notes, coconut, tuberose, hibiscus, and violets. Base notes are vanilla, patchouli, musk, and amber. I love all those things. I love all of those things. There's not one thing in there I don't like. Every time I put it on, I'm like, wow. Wow, I smell like Rihanna. Wow. It's to me, for the girls and the gays, coming from body sprays, because I use the love of body spray. This is the best transition into perfumes. You hear me? You smell like this all day. You smell fun and fruity and ugh, delicious. Like you literally smell like you want to take a bite out of you. I wish they made like creams that smelled like this. Like you know how you can get like a body spray, body cream, like trio kit? If this had a cream, it'd be over. It's giving like the Brazilian bum bum cream, like that whole line put in a perfume. So my last two are actually my newest two, which would explain why I'm so obsessed with them. Number two, we have Maison Margiela's Replica Bubble Bath. You see this tiny little bottle I bought, I am ready to upsize and buy a full size. That's how you know it's real. When did I buy this? Boxing Day, Christmas-ish? Look at where it's at. Boxing Day, Christmas. We are in May. May just began. Boxing Day, Christmas. This is a perfume. This is not body wash or something that you should be using this much of. Okay. Comforting Clean Accords is an understatement. I bought this because of the Black Girl Fragrance Twitter. They suggested you put this on before you go to bed, after you take a shower, just to like up your luxury game, like just to feel nice and clean and delicious. When I tell you it started as that and now it's become like a daily perfume, plus because I bought this small size, this is my travel perfume. I have brought it home. My sister-in-law has purchased it. My mother-in-law has purchased it. It's that good. It is that kind of perfume that there's something so fresh and clean about it. Like you smell like a bubble, like beyond bubble bath to me. Like be, be, bubble bath and beyond is what the name should be called. The way that I want to buy every Maison Margiela perfume now that I own this. And because the name was so spot on, I'm like, okay, so all the names must be spot on. I have to try them all. I need to smell like campfire, fireplace, whatever the hell it's called. Yeah, I don't know what the whole replica thing means, so don't ask me, but it's Maison Margiela replica bubble bath. I don't wanna be incorrect when you go on your little search. Fresh scent, unit sex, genderless scent, which I love. It is floral. Keynotes, soap bubble accord, rose super essence, white musk, which I, I couldn't pinpoint what kind of musk it was, but white musk doing it in here. Coconut milk accord. But this fresh floral perfume contains aromatic bubble soap accord accented with soft floral scents of rose, super essence, jasmine, and lavender. The clean fresh scent gives way to a grounding musk perfume and subtle coconut is revealed melting into the skin with delicate creaminess. Yes, it's perfect for before bed, but when I tell you it's become like a day-to-day -day because sometimes I like, I'm addicted to this. Like I'm like, I want to smell like that again, so I'll wear it to work. And then I'll wear it after I take a shower and go to bed. It's, it's really a good staple to have. It is the one, like, where you can wear it to work, wear it during the day, wear it at night, wear it to bed. Like, like it's, there's nothing that it can't do. And I love that you can buy them in this size. Okay, and my current favorite is Love Don't Be Shy by Killian. So, smell like Rihanna, again. This is an eau de parfum. This is very much so, to me, baby powder but in the best way. I don't know what it is about this that literally smells like candy, but baby powder. It's sweet. It's really like 
your perfect staple perfume. And that's why I understand why whenever Rihanna would wear this, people would be like, oh my god, you smell so good. What is that? Because I can't even describe what this smells like. Like, I wish, I wish I could. It smells like candy. It smells like, you know when you put like candy, certain types of like soft, like, like say like Swedish berries or like big feet in like a jar. You know like how the jar smells after and something like that, but better. So it is floral. It says unisex, genderless scent, but I would say that this is a more feminine scent. It's also warm florals, which is something I feel like I don't have enough of in this collection. There's something about it that just like tickles the nose, warms the heart. I really don't know how to describe it. I feel like when you get into those like peonies, gardenias, like those types of flowers, they end up kind of being kind of cool. And I don't know how to describe that as being a scent, but this warm scent, it's almost like peppered. Like it's so good, oh, it's so good guys. So keynotes, I can't, again, I'm trying to sound like the expert and I can't even sound like the expert because I can't even describe it. Love this. Don't love the price tag, I love this. Keynotes, orange blossom, vanilla absolute, luscious marshmallow. That is that baby powder smell I'm talking about. This fragrance implores you at the opening with tender orange blossom absolute. Juicy honeysuckle and plush rose are softly caressed by the sweetness of luscious marshmallow sugar accord, satisfying the craving pang of new love. A warm amber base lends a touch of sensuality. It's fucking good, guys. Can I say it's worth the, what's the price tag? $322 price tag, that's between you and God, that's between you and your Lord and Savior, that's between you and Lord Jesus Christ. I can't make that decision. To me, it is. Am I gonna buy it again when I'm done? Absolutely. Am I gonna buy the mini size? Yup. Yup. I love smelling like this. And you know what too? Again, not to be elitist, but we're here. We're, we're perfume snobs, we're fragrance snobs. That's why we're here, we're talking about it. But I love that it is. $320. You know why? Because not everyone's gonna buy it. So I like that not only do I smell like Rihanna, but because it's expensive, not everyone's gonna buy it. And the scent is so unique that it's nice to not smell like everybody else. That is a big thing with also growing my perfume collection and why I lean toward the Ellie Sobs or the Versace's or wearing bubble bath during the day. <laughs> because I like smelling like me. And that's what I was talking about before when I was saying things about the Versace and the signature scent. I would want my signature scent to be something that not everyone smells like. And even lately, I've been really getting into layering some of these perfumes and seeing how they smell on top of each other over time. And even right now, because I've been spray, spray, spraying, my room smells delicious and I'm like, not to say I'm gonna put these all on at the same time, but I could. And in a weird way, they would work. So I'm still building my fragrance collection. I'm still building my signature scent. I'm still looking for it. I don't think that any of these are exactly it just yet, but I thought I'd check in and let you guys know where I'm at. I am a perfume snob. I'm trying not to be, but like, so good. When you, once you get to a level where you know what a good perfume smells like, you've had access to that, Bitch. It's, hard, it's hard to be like, I just want to go back to regular body spray. No. As fragrance becomes something that's more accessible to me, as I start to spend a little bit more on it, as I get gifted more of it, I will keep you guys updated as to how my collection grows, reviewing new fragrances, and I hope that you guys enjoy that kind of content. And with that, I think we can wrap up this video. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you did like it or found it helpful, please give this video a big thumbs up. Comment down below if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about anything I did today, anything I talked about. Please leave that in the comments down below. And as always, subscribe to me. You pay my bills, right? Again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.